You can choose who your friends are. You can choose who your bosses are. You can even choose who your lovers are. But whether they beg, borrow or steal, you can never choose who your family are. I'm Alex. I'm Rob. And this is the Wolford Weekly Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to Wolford Weekly Podcast, your EastEnders podcast, where this week we'll be discussing the episodes that were released on the BBC in the UK from Monday the 4th to Friday the 8th of October. And my compondre, I would not want to play a game to its death with anyone else, it's Rob. Hello Rob. Hello Alex, how are you this week? Are you well? Hello everybody. I'm... Very, very well. Um, before we started the podcast, Rob and I came that close to basically scrapping talking about EastEnders this week and just making yeah. an hour-long Squid Game podcast because we are both obsessed Brilliant. with it. Have Absolutely you watched? obsessed. Have you watched it? Have you watched it? If you haven't, why not? Pause us. Pause us. Why Don't not? close us down. Pause us. Then go watch an episode. I mean, yeah, because we may well it. find that me and Alex just drift into conversation about it at some point and it would take you to not know what we're on about it's honestly like the best thing i've ever seen it's amazing like it's the, one of the best series like ever it's crazy so so good so good it's just breathtaking so complex honestly i perfect perfect television for me it's the set design mm. the writing the acting the direction everything mm. was just brilliant absolutely brilliant Mwah. and the gore Beautiful. i particularly love the gore mm. yeah oh piece of art real piece of art um yeah, but brilliant. look we're gonna brilliant. get into territory where we will just go on and on and on about <laughs> squid game because we've, yeah, we we've spent half an hour before starting the podcast talking about <laughs> yeah. this tv can't series. carry on um and yeah. uh we, can, we, 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 should, we should draw a line under it for now and perhaps maybe bring a Red light, for, Alex. Red day. light. But <laughs> I, shall, I shall stay as still as I can. Um, we have a new feature to start the show with this week, Rob. We are going to delve into Lubil's suitcase. So... With this feature, we're basically going to look back at a story that happened in the past that was particularly notable, uh, like we did last week when we talked about You Ain't My Mother, which was uh, 15 or 20 years ago from uh, when we uh, were recording the podcast. This week, this week, we are going to talk about a story that happened in 1996, this week in 1996, 25 years ago, and that was when Cindy Bill had Ian shot by a hitman. Because she just couldn't cope anymore being married to him. I mean, things of fantasy, but yet so brilliantly done. 25 years ago. And again, I said this last year with... I said, I said this last year. I said this last week with the uh, with the cat story. I remember watching that live as well. I remember watching that now. Let's think about this. 1996, I would only have been like eight, I think. Eight or nine. Eight, I want to say. Let's go for the younger version. I would have been eight. And, Barely out of your um, nappies. Barely out of my nappies, you know, it's more far more interested in Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, and um it was it was and and yeah, but I do I do remember it and I remember asking my mum why did that man just fall on the floor? Why is but I remember the characters and I remember the characters' names because they, they were just that ingrained in you as a child, weren't they, in those days? Uh, and I remember asking why is, why has Cindy made that happen because that was completely beyond my cap my my compution. I wasn't. I I had no idea why a wife would have that done. I thought, what a genius idea! <laughs> Even at that age, what a great idea! Can you do that to family members? Glaring across at my brother at the time. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. So I mean, that was the height of sort of Cindy being like the super bitch that she became, wasn't it? Like that was a, quite an era for the show where you had Cindy. Because I remember quite clearly the David and Cindy affair. That was the first sort of affair storyline that I ever remember seeing on the soap. So that was sort of in the height of that, wasn't it? Well, yeah. She she so she had an affair with both the Wicks brothers, um, uh, Simon and David. And David was obviously the latter. Fair. And she wanted to run mm. away with the kids with David uh, because she felt like she was in this loveless marriage with Ian. She'd already she'd already been caught out by Ian because Ian had got an undercover detective to spy on her. Um, and then uh, she basically became this. This almost like this wife to Ian, you know, they they were no longer in love with each other, but she 
just she kind of pretended that she wanted to like be with him because you know he threatened to basically take everything away from her and so she thought there was no end to it she was desperate and so she hired a hitman who she got from Barry Barry Evans who'd have thought Barry Evans the character who of became would be this character who knew hitmen yeah yeah and wow. uh, had him shot not dead though as we know because obviously Ian Bill uh, is still hanging around now like a bad whiff through his son yeah. Peter but he yeah, limps around, well, limps out and maybe mm. limps back again. Um, but it's so good. At the time, I mean, it, it, it has just been shown on Classic because it was in, uh, like I say, 1996. At the time, it was seen as a bit of a kind of like a, a departure for EastEnders. It kind of started to use a few really? more kind of shock tactics at that point. Yeah, I think it did. Wow. It felt like it was a bit not not what you would feel is canon nowadays like nowadays you i mean that would just be a b plot <laughs> like someone, yeah, someone getting shot be, by a hit that, that'd be t- that'd just... t- mid-tuesday episode <laughs> wouldn't it yeah <laughs> yeah but at the time it, it was blink. a big oh, deal right. and it had such uh, and it had such a big build-up and such a huge aftermath to the point that basically uh it led to cindy running away abducting the kids while Ian was in hospital, that ma- this mad chase to the yeah. Euro Tunnel with Cindy uh, grabbing Lucy yes. and Peter, and uh, and uh, no, no, he didn't. I don't think she got Peter, but she got Stephen. Um, and no, Stephen, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's this wonderful moment, and then it then led on to further, further on for Ian then to go to Italy to then find Cindy and kidnap the kids back to then have the divorce. So they, this is, I mean, this is something we talk about modern day. The aftermath of that one storyline, two years down the line. Word was terrific and <laughs> and it was brilliant so yes wonderful story on the uh in 1996 when cindy had ian shot um and i'd like to shout out that next week we'll be doing it again we'll be looking at a story that happened uh from the 11th of october to the 18th of october in the past and if there's any stories that come out in your mind that we can maybe discuss for Lou Bill suitcase comment below in if you're watching this on YouTube or just get in touch with us on our Twitter and our Instagram at Wolford Weekly but more details will be at the end of the show so Rob that's the past now let's talk about the present suitcase suitcase closed mm. the, su- the case is closed and we're going to start off with the continuation of Patrick and Denise desperately scrambling to try to keep their business alive and basically being told that there's no hope. They've lost it. Um, and Patrick has talked about remortgaging the house. But Denise says, no, this is it now. We just need to start again. Kim has kind of started again because she's now started her social media empire. Kim. Yeah. Kim. No, I want to say Kim Spiracy, but it's not a Kim Spiracy, is it? It's a, <laughs> it's Good a title, though. Say, put, write um, that in the diary for a title for another episode. Kim Spiracy. Put, put, write it down, Alex. That's a good idea. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, yes, we have... Well, Highlight of the week for, for, with this storyline, anyway, was uh, was sort of Kim doing her live streaming. Brilliant. And why don't we do that? We should think. What it was the things that we could take from <laughs> Kim's kind of social media thing that we could maybe put into plan. You know, she had people like messaging her, going, "You look so hot, Queen, and love you," and, and and all this kind of thing. Now, I I would I would argue the internet is never that positive, so it didn't feel realistic. <laughs> but um, you know, where were the trolls, Alex? Where were the trolls? Um, I don't quite know what Kim's doing at the minute. Is she just trying to earn more money? Foxcatcher. I can't believe we're still talking about Foxcatcher. How is this been close to a year now? It's still carrying on. Close to a year, is it now, for Foxcatcher? Crazy. It's pretty much when she returned. I don't know when Kim returned back as a character, but she she spoke to an influencer two weeks ago, didn't she? And then she used that. Last week she was talking about becoming like almost a a makeup artist on a pyramid scheme, it felt like. (laughs) And now this week she's... I can't help but think this this is going to be like a pyramid scheme story for Kim. Can you not... Does it feel like that for you? The fact that she's doing these live streams. And occasionally she mentions Foxcatcher. But she can't be making much from Foxcatcher, can she? I mean, I, I mean, I'm just trying to think when that started because she was doing Foxcatcher when uh, Ikra and Mila got together, so that was a while back now. Um, she was the one that was all in, for, in the one that was basically trying to get Bobby all in love with with somebody. She got Peter and Ash together, I think, as at one point. I think she was somewhat responsible for that. Uh, so by default. it's been going on for months and by default. So it's been going on for months and months and months now. And I can't believe that, that that's getting more aftermath than some of the storylines that we've had recently. 
But, um, <laughs> hey, you know, continuation, fine. Um, I have to say, I mean, the storyline with the whole um, the salon thing didn't change all that much this week. But um, I was, I'm, I want to say, I'm quite pleased that the salon's sort of done with the foxes because, like I said last week, I didn't ever really believe the fox, the, the foxes in there because none of them are qualified to be hairdressers. Um, no. I'd be interested to know Not an sort of Logan's inside. opinion on it. Cause not an MVQ insight. Uh, I'd be interested to know sort of Lola's opinion on it because Lola's now lost her job as well, as well as her home. Didn't mm. have any kind of inkling of how to how Lola felt about any of that this week. Um, so maybe we'll find that out next week. We haven't had any sort of aftermath from the fire whatsoever because but I've got no, we haven't seen Phil since since the fire happened. No idea where Phil's living at the minute. I'd like to just want to just put that one out there. <laughs> just where is Phil living? Where is Phil? <laughs> Have you seen Phil? I oh, haven't seen ben. Phil. And Ben and the um, rest of the family that are staying there. Like, there's well, Ben, no kind ben of and Callum will be living together. we know about is Janine. Well, Ben will be living at... Yeah, well, Ben will be living at the Halfway's house. Won't, won't, uh, like, in the, with Callum, won't it? The so Halfway that, house, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Quite apt for Lola is with... Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lola is with Isaac. Um... But Phil, not a clue. No idea where Phil... Where, because I can't imagine that <laughs> Phil is living with Kat because Kat is also living with Janine. I know this is completely off topic of the story, but Kat is also living with Janine. No. So are you telling me that they've had Phil and Janine living in the same house when Janine has been has been exposed to the person who was responsible for the fire, but we've had no conversation between Phil and Janine whatsoever, like you set fire to my house? Nothing. No. <laughs> But also, Phil had, like, a nice change of clothes as well after the fire. Like, he was, like, literally about an hour after the well, fire like his, happened. Yeah, but like his mum did. He, he, took, like... he, got that, he got that off his mum. He had, like, a whole white suit in a plastic uh, bag ready to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Always prepared. Those his mum's preparation prepared. there. Yeah, always. Always prepared for a house fire. Always. <laughs> um, to actually, I want to also bring up you saying about um, uh, Lola losing her job again. Nothing to do with the story, uh, the foxes, and nothing to do maybe with could have talked about it with the Bernie story. But I you just brought it up in my head now. Um, the call center has lost three people from their job: Stacy, who's gone to prison; mm-hmm. uh, Mo, yeah. who's gone off cruising; yeah, Mo, and now yeah. Bernie. Bernie, because <laughs> yeah. Bernie, Bernie has now uh, disappeared and decided to go off and uh, basically take the baby with her. Um, Rainy and Stuart's baby. Um, after she got Rainy to take the drug test, it was cleared. It, Rainy was very honest as well and said, "Like I took a sleeping pill last night, so it would probably come up, but this week I'll take take it. Tomorrow it'll be fine." I mean, where's Bernie? I predicted ages ago that Bernie was never going to give up that baby and we were right weren't we, we Bernie no, was never going to give up yeah, that child because she had lost a child herself and yeah. there was that attachment and she, you know it was going to it was going to be it was always going to be this story but I mean I feel like Bernie's done the dirty here I mean this is oh yeah that, massively and the money as well she's not giving the money back either I mean she said oh they can take the contract to court but they weren't oh, going to make anything of it but she's taken a lot of money too. She's taken a lot of money from yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. Does it feel fair? I mean, to be fair, that drug test that they did, well, you know when they shot, they had a brief that was shot of like how it works and the instru- what you're supposed to see on the screen. If Karen was anywhere near as confused by that yeah. as I was, because I was looking at it like, what? What? I think that Karen <laughs> sort of looked at that and went, it's, it's, it's clear. <laughs> like, Rainy could have been off her <laughs> yeah. head on heroin. Karen wouldn't have been, Karen would been like, yeah, fine, she's clear. I don't understand that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I think that Bernie. This uh, this all feels very odd for Bernie because it kind of came. It clearly she'd made her mind at what she was doing, no matter what the result was. It's like yeah. she got a clear test yeah. back. Rainy's Rain fine. Rainy's not under clearly, but Bernie's still like, well, I don't believe you, and then just left. It's it was all very it was all very random. It sort of felt like a kind of oh, we need to get rid of Bernie. Let's do that sort of thing. So Bernie's gone now. Apparently she's only on a break. She would she'll be back at some point, probably once Bernie's had the child. Yes. It's almost as if they put the character on maternity leave <laughs> rather than the actress. I don't know, um, <laughs> but the um, yeah. So I'm presume, I'm presuming that the, she'll come back when the baby's born. But then this is so unfair on Rainy because she's got the whole thing with Abby and yeah. now this kid. So she's basically got yeah. two people separately who are taking kids away from her. This feels a bit harsh on Rainy yeah. now, to be fair. Yeah. Um. So it'll be interesting to see. And what, be, what will be interesting now is to see how Stuart reacts to it. Yes, and they've introduced the character of Sandy as well this week. Again, we'll talk about Sandy a little bit later on, Dottie's mum. Mm. Um, and I feel like there's no, it's not a coincidence there where there's already this week of Bernie felt suspicious that there could have been a bit of drug 
uh, kind of exchanging between Rainy and Sandy. And I feel like this could be another moment for Rainy where she's just going to, it's going to become intolerable for her. I mean, she's gone through so much, like you say. And yeah, I worry that Rainy's going to get, you know, slightly, is it back on the wagon or off the wagon? She's fallen off the wagon and she's going to, you know, going to have a hard time. I mean, Stuart, with all the goodwill that Stuart has, I, I can't help but feel like the Stuart's words aren't going to help her this time round because he always says we're strong together, we look after one another, we're honest. Mm. And then to be fair, of all the couples that are on the square, Stuart and Rainey are probably the two most honest couples and the most open with probably. you know discussion about their problems than anyone else. Um, but I wonder if if Rainey maybe does slide, maybe Stuart would do the same, and then we're going to end up with a kind of like almost like a Rainey Phil situation where they're going to get in this kind of drug den situation and it's going to be, be a real difficult. Thing. Them to get back out again because mm. they don't have a lot of friends on the square mind... really either a lot of people still see them from a distance don't they yeah that's true I mean I wouldn't mind Rainy falling off the wagon because that would be a great story for Tanya Franks to do because I don't feel that she's been given yeah. anything massive to do since she's been back so a, bit, a big old drug binge storyline would be lovely to see for Tanya Franks that'd be good um, and it might you know and, it, and who yeah, knows I might even give Vi something to do we do a love a drug binge. Um, it might even give Vi something to do. You never know. Because that'd be nice, actually. I could see them. Yeah. Actually, I could see Vi That's actually true. being really Vi. useful as a character in that regard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I could see her sort of like having quite a few brutal heart-to-hearts with Rainy in that respect, which would be really nice to see because it would give Vi some layers. Who knows, you know? Or we could just be inventing ideal scenarios in our heads and it could ha- nothing could happen whatsoever and she could just sulk for nine months until Bernie <laughs> returns. That's more likely, it feels, at the moment. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, Stuart's reaction, I assume, we're going to get next week. I hope. You would hope so. Because surely Rainey's not just going to take this it line makes down. Sense. Especially now she's got two... Especially, it does make sense, but that doesn't mean anything. I, you know, I'd hope that... <laughs> Um, Rainey's not just going to sit back and take this now because this is quite a big thing for her character. This is, this is like she's literally having kids ripped away from her. Max and Abby, God knows where yeah. they are at this stage. <laughs> like, I have no idea where Max and Abby <laughs> even are at this stage. Like, what well, we been here last time? Like, they were halfway around Croatia or something like that. They were halfway up a mountain in Croatia or something. Um, Bernie has gone to see Keanu, I think is what she said, which doesn't seem that far away. So, in, in right. all fairness, you know, it's. You could argue that maybe Rainey could just think, oh, she's at Keanu's, that's all right. But then Karen made it quite clear that she wasn't planning on coming back. Um, so I don't know. I that don't was know it, wasn't it? Karen clearly said, yeah, yeah Cla- Karen clearly said to Rainey that, like, basically, Ber- Bernie's gone and her intentions were to take the child for her, you know, take the child for herself. You know what I mean? Keep the child, have the child yeah. and birth it for, and look after it herself. And that's basically that, 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 that scream from Rainey in the Vic when she was just going, mm. no, nah, again. Nice. You know, and it's like, oh my goodness. But I mean, nice. again, Tanya Franks plays her character so well where you just feel, mm. this week, I just felt like what Bernie had done was wrong and what Rainey had yeah. complete right to feel angry at the Taylors for this. Yeah. And um, I just ugh, I just felt like it was a bit ugh, for Bernie's character and it didn't feel right. But the reason why Bernie left was because Keegan had originally had the intention to leave because she he wanted to go visit Keanu because he wanted to leave his problems behind and kind of just move on. But Liam has uh, kind of started to show his colours to, Ke- to Keegan, yes. but no one else seems to be- believe what Keegan's saying, especially Tiff, because blood is thicker than water and Keegan's done the dirty, so why should Tiff believe him? But Keegan is quite right in believing that uh, uh, Liam's not such a good guy after all because he stole, was it Whitney's engagement ring that Kush had given her, pretending that Sandy had stolen yes. it. Yeah, and then pawned it for money. So presumably then that storyline of him getting the phone call saying, give us the money has now ended, you know, which I'm glad about because, oh my goodness, if they had strung that along, I would have just, uh, I would have just switched off. Give I just wouldn't care. I just wouldn't care. Give it time. <laughs> well, this is it. Because the other thing is that not only is Keegan suspicious of Liam, but Liam is now got a job at the Archers and becoming a bit more connected with Ben and Kurit. Which, Which let's be honest, well. can only lead to shenanigans. To shenanigans. We're going to have shenanigans mm. very soon, aren't we? Um, because we know that Liam's character isn't there for the long term. He's only there for the short term. So, yeah. Well, I think I think it's, it's something's going to be linked between Liam's money problems and shenanigans. So, how do you feel about this story going forward? Is it is it one that's interesting you? Piqued your interest? Um, Has Liam's entrance been as good as you thought it would be? Or not that great? 
Be gay. Um, I, <laughs> I, I wonder. It's it's interesting. I I'm glad that they've sort of given Liam a a bit more kind of in the story because at the minute he was kind of just like throwing his weight around and being like uber chav and just being um just being well just being a bit of an ass really. So I'm glad that they've kind of given him this thing that clearly he's worried <laughs> about. There's some there's some there's some stuff in there that was interesting. I like I quite liked the little um thing with the ring this week. I thought that was actually a fairly believable thing to do. You know, when you've got one heroin addict in the house, um you know, and then and then she's been accused of seeing the ring. I thought that was quite a swift little twist. I quite enjoyed that, I have to say. Um whether we find out what his money problems are remains to be seen. And we surely he's gonna he's gonna give that money to somebody, so we might still find out who the person is. And with Keegan being the only one that kind of But do you reckon is Keegan is gonna make the is gonna make the connection? Because Ke- did Keegan know about the ring? I can't I think remember. He- did he? Well, Keegan saw him leave the pawn shop, so he knows that he pawns something. So I think Keegan already has made the connection that they, that Liam is in trouble because he overheard the phone call as well, which Liam was having, and he made a dig at Liam at the time. And then when he saw Liam in the Vic later on with the kind of flashing some cash, and he was like buying mm. a pint, uh, Keegan was yeah, yeah. as good as basically saying to him, you know, I know you're up to something. I know that, that, that there's a secret. And as soon as I find out, I'm going to let Tiff know and you're going to be in a heap of trouble um because keegan's already tried hasn't he with tiff basically saying there's something not right with liam and i was gonna say tiff was like well why should i believe you you've lied to me once before and this is my brother Mm. so you know (laughs) good luck but shoo Um, which led to keegan then wanting to leave because he was like well this yeah Mm. what's the point um uh, yeah there's definitely gonna be this rivalry between keegan and liam um and Mm. it's I'm presuming that he's paid his debt because I'm I'm just guessing once he got the money from the pawn shop, he then just went, paid the debt and then whatever money was left over, he can then use um, later on. I mean, do you think it's going to be a bit like when Who Chantel's knows? ring was seen? It's going to be seen in the front window later on and Whitney's going to walk over and be like, that's my ring. And then Keegan will Maybe, overhear yeah. this in his sandwich store and be like, ah, I figured it out now. Yeah. I now know what Liam's up yeah, to. I think that's... Yeah, I think that's probably quite likely. Probably just to give it a nice little circular, Grey will buy the ring out of the pawn shop and present her with it. That'll be the nice, you yes. know, sort of circular little yes. thing to do. I think that's the, probably the way they're going to do it, isn't it? <laughs> um, let's be honest, that's how they're going to do it. Um, but, no, I quite like it. I like the sort of hypocrisy of Liam. To be fair, the new, the new Liam is... Um, he seems to be... He's slotted in quite well, I think. I think he sort of fits that sort of butcher mould. Yeah. Um, sort of ducking, diving. He's he will fine. work all right in the in the archers, I think. It's going to... I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm trying to work out, like, if him and Ben are going to make a good sort of pairing. Because I can't see... Because Liam's only, like, 18, isn't he? And I wonder if Ben would put yeah. that much investment into an 18-year-old to kind of be his second-hand man in that sort of thing. I don't know. I don't know if that whether that's going to work. Or second hand man in what though? Say. Second hand man at the garage? In like some sort or of shenan- man no, some for sort shenanigans. Of, in a shenanigany, yeah, for shenanigans. You know, I can a shenaniganing, yeah, <laughs> shenaniganing, <laughs> shenaniganing. Um, that's another title for the show. <laughs> presumably, shenaniganing. Um, that's going to happen at some point, isn't it? Like the, the, the we it's, cause it's been a while since we've had any sort of Mitchell shenaniganing. So I think that oh, it, it's it, a lovely it, time. It, it, it was a lovely. Well, I don't know because I think that you know Ben will sort of wave money around. And Leon will be attracted to, to it, and then he'll and then something will happen that way. And maybe that's how Liam exits again. I don't know. So we'll see. I guess we'll see. Intrigue. I'll give it that. I am intrigued by Liam at the minute, and I'm, I'm sort of intrigued to see where this is going to go. I don't know whether this is going to yeah. end. Because um, obviously, you know, if you've been on anywhere social media, because they made it quite they made it quite clear that Maisie Smith has now gone now. Like so, her, she's filmed a final scene. She's which, disappeared. So Tiff, Tiff is on her way which out. We'll be talking point, about so. at the end of the show. So stay listening if you want to hear a, uh, what our view on this is. Yes, but I do wonder if how Keegan and Tiff are going to leave things is my is my question. I wonder if like they're going to leave on good terms or if they're going to leave on bad terms when all this comes out. So it remains to be seen, and it remains to be seen where sort of Liam's role in that will all be. So mm, watch this space. Mm. I like you. I, I'm intrigued by Liam. He uh, seems to be an interesting character. I, one thing that I can't get over right now, and this is possibly just me, but every time he ends a scene, he looks like he's sucking on a wasp. He goes, 
like that all the time. It's just <laughs> and just, chat, and I just yeah, wish he wouldn't. I know that's. I know it's, this it's is a, broody chat, tough but thing like to do. I just. Oh. Can you think of anything tougher is to do it? than suck okay, on a wasp, fine. Alex? I can't. Yes, no. It's a tough thing to do. Of course, if you sucked on more wasps, you would be that, tougher. And I would be more intimidated by you. So. You know what that sounds like? That's, that's that sounds like a game for the Squid Game series two. Stuck, Stuck on a wasp. wasp. So. Stuck on a wasp. You want that money? Oh, I'm a Stuck on a wasp. Take your pick. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. This week, Martin <laughs> has been job hunting because he's realised that he hasn't got a lot of money and he's living in a spare bedroom at Sharon's flat with Zach. And so he needs to find a job. So instead of hitting the road or going online, he just went back to family because he can always rely on family. Went to Peter Bill because Peter's apparently controlling the empire right now in some kind of like Darth Vader (laughs) grip. And uh, he uh, gets a job at the fish and chip shop, which wasn't his first choice. He wanted to be a barrow boy again. He wanted to be back behind that fruit and veg store, back to where he belonged. Um, And so he wasn't too happy about the choice that Peter had given him. And especially the fact that Peter kept calling him, asking him to do overtime and basically generally made him his kind of lackey and made him do like jobs that Peter couldn't be bothered to do, which resulted in Martin and Zach deep fat frying his iPad this week. I mean, I thought it was a genuinely lovely moment and I quite enjoyed all of it. I really did. And it was nice to see Martin back in this kind of very comic jovial role. It was nice to see old Martin back. Dark Martin's gone, hopefully. Bring, keep this Martin, I feel. It sort of cemented the Zach and uh, Martin friendship as well, didn't it? It's, it's like Zach is officially there now as Martin's best mate. Again, we said, we've said this before, it's, it feel, it's still a little bit sad that literally Cush has just been forgotten about by Martin that quickly. But... You know, the, you know, the other thing is Martin and Zach are sort of working in that role, aren't they? You know, Zach's slotted in nicely into that role. And I totally believed it, you know, when he was like, oh, we'll think of something. Don't you worry. And then and then went and did that. Um, we're going to talk about like how Peter's become. Uh, they seem to be trying to make Peter mini Ian. What do you think? Does that is that a role that works for Peter? It feels it feels a little bit strange for the way that they've done that to Peter because Peter was never even when he was reintroduced as new the Peter we have today he was he always never wanted to be like his father he always wanted to kind of swerve away from being his father's son um and then as soon as he gets a little bit of power given to him by Cappy he then all of a sudden is Ian Bill Jr. Now is this is this because of the fact that he is maybe replacing Adam Woodyat? There was never an intention that Adam Woodyat was meant to be leaving when he did, or for as long as he has, and so they're kind of just filling him in, no? Uh, no, I don't agree with that because I think that I, th- I assume that Adam Woodjet is was always going to come back at some point. I think what this more is is just sort of working on the arrogance of this Peter, you know, because he is. Um, you know, we've seen Peter, like, you know, Johnny Bravo, Peter doing his muscles and his gym. Good good image of you, in the by, the by the way. You know, we were talking about being in the gym last week. I enjoyed, you know, I could imagine you being like that in the gym with like, so it's just up, leave me alone, it's leg day. Um, so, <laughs> tight lycra, <laughs> excellent. It's an image, it's an image for you. Um, but yeah, this Peter, that's I sort of think works see. with that sort of Ian role. No, that's your only fans account link. Um, I think it sort of works with this Peter, with this... Um, arrogance that he's got because he is the sort of person I think that would just quite happily go around sacking people and bossing them around and he's lazy enough I think to do that as well so um but out of all the kids that Ian ever had uh, you know you would have thought really that Peter would have been the one that was least likely to be mini Ian because Peter I think has always sort of fought against Ian's attitudes in that respect and especially that actually even this Peter has done that yeah. when Ian was around but then you're also just left with Bobby, who I don't think could ever be like that because he's just too timid to sort of go around sacking people. So I don't know. So it does sort of work with this. Is this going to be a thing, do you think, that Peter's character is going to stick with, where he's going to sort of have his eye on the Beal Empire and even when he eventually returns? Is that going to be kind of a battle for them in the future, do you think? What, maybe. Well, like how Lucy ended up getting uh, all of his businesses yeah. by kind of underhanded tactics. Maybe then, mm. maybe. I mean, the the thing is that he got he got out, you know, out outdone, as it were, by his own brother Bobby this week because Bobby went behind his back and spoke to Kathy, and then Kathy phoned up Grassed and said, "Don't you do that, Peter." Yeah, grass, mm. the grass, um, and uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it like you say, it feels a bit out of character for Peter because Lucy was more like her dad, wasn't she? Lucy was quite 
cutthroat and business was more important than a lot of things like the young ian bill was um progressively ian bill's story was throughout um i mean the thing is is that i don't know what else they could do with peter because they kind of introduced peter as this kind of like this blank space this blank sheet and they kind of they have now started thinking about what they could do because a minute but when he's first introduced he became vengeful against bobby that kind of ended then he became mm. obsessed with ash and wanted to like be together with ash then he then he went to hospital and started screaming and then that ended um and he's and then he kind of just kind of dripped around the square for a couple of months kind of just making fun of schizophrenia and anyone with any kind of you know problem that basically he thought was not important and now he's then now becoming obsessed with business and looking after the i mean maybe there's a part that he's just happy to be given any kind of responsibility (laughs) and that he's just you Mm. know like any kind of idiot of the family kind of like the fact that he's been given because he's the oldest by default he's now the one who's looking after the business which doesn't necessarily mean that's the right thing to do um and uh it just felt i mean for me peter bill was always kind of like a bit of a romantic kind of quite thoughtful and quite you know and and which is none of the I things that this know. that and this peter bill is <laughs> exactly none of what this current peter bill is and is that is that down to the casting that they just don't feel like they can fit that in with that kind of the actor who's playing him or is it because they just wanted to reinvent peter or was it because they just brought peter bill in and then they kind of threw him in a bit like dare i say a bit like i feel like they're doing with janine at the moment they're kind of throwing her in and now don't really know what to do with her <laughs> like it feels a bit like that like I, this kind of with I mean, peter bill i mean with janine i would argue that i mean she's only been back for a little while i can't imagine that they've already run out of ideas for janine she'll set fire to the mitchell house and then we'll think of something else later I, i'm assuming that there's going to especially with christmas coming up i'm assuming janine is going to yeah <laughs> but her comeback has been so flat Mm, well, I don't know because she just hasn't been in it this week, you know. And she's working at the Vic now, so that's sort. Well, she hasn't of, been in it last there. week. I don't though. know. She was she was only in it for a couple of scenes last week. Yeah, but I think last week was about establishing her as sort of in the barmaid role. I don't know. I've not. I haven't given up on Jan- right. the Janine stuff yet. I feel that she. We, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. But yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. You know, it has been a bit of a quieter thing for Janine. But the thing is, I actually kind of quite like that they haven't brought her back. Like absolutely kind of insane and immediately doing crazy stuff you know they're actually sort of letting her settle in and be a bit of a human being which for a character like janine you do sort of need to do because otherwise it would just feel unrealistic that anyone would tolerate her at all so they've sort of Mm. so i don't mind if she starts coming in as a bit nicer and even starts making some friends because remember janine always did have friends at some stage you know in in her past i don't know why we're talking about janine when she wasn't even in it this week but you know she did always have um you know friends and stuff so (laughs) It's Peter Bill, yeah. Um, so, I don't know, we'll, we'll wait and see where Janine goes. With Peter, I think that I can sort of... Just because of his arrogance, I can see this kind of working. Because that's one thing that Ian has as well, in all fairness. And has always had, is arrogance. Ian is an incredibly arrogant character. So, maybe if they start playing on that a little bit. And even have, a, even have Peter slowly sort of turn into his dad and absolutely despise Ian for that. Like, what have you turned me into? What, like, you know, those horrible moments where you sort of look in the mirror and you see your parents staring back at you. That is not an invitation for a special effect, by the way. Yeah. So don't even go there. Um, it, but, you know, like when you just see your parents staring back at you, you realise what you've become. You know, maybe it's going in that sort of direction. Who knows? But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's, as you say, there's more for the Bill Empire in the future, I think. And so we'll see. Because there's, there's clearly going to be a battle between Martin and uh, Peter, I think, for who should have supremacy of the Empire. Feels like maybe, perhaps, the Empire. I, may, I do make it sound like a Star Wars film, don't I? <laughs> like uh, yeah, do. Peter's Revenge Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker is um, mine. Yeah, <laughs> Revenge of the... Yeah. Not these titles, these titles, Rob. Um, Rent so a new deal. character is introduced this week, which was Dottie's mum, yes. Sandy. Um, and she came in with quite uh, an explosive entrance, kind of smashing things about, smoking inside, which I know it sounds like it's such a lame thing. To Shocking. Oh, she's smoking. Shocking. But like, I know. Shocking behaviour. <laughs> yeah. Because the smoking ban has been like in the UK for like 15 years. It genuinely feels weird yeah. seeing people smoking <gasps> inside now. Oh, she like, smokes! That's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, I did. I was like, what's she doing? How dare you? I know. Um, 
And uh, Tom's... It's how we know that she's a Tom's bad a person. worried about it. Because she smoked. Yes. It's how we know that she's a bad person. Because she was smoking... And has yeah, that's and has like little gold earrings and spiky hair. That's what bad people do. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is panicking because Tom thinks that Sandy's going to ruin the yes. plan that um, that Dotty and he had cr- cr- created. Even though he's kind of leaning against the plan, and even Dotty this week, I felt like was kind of before her mum arrived, was feeling a bit remorseful that she kind of wanted to trick Sonia because Sonia was very supportive this week to Dottie and so it felt like they were all beginning to bond they were all beginning to get on with each other which was quite convenient because now there's kind of like a general census against Sandy apart from Dottie Mm. because quite rightly so because she is again family she has her mum you know Anyone could say, like, you know, oh, you, you just get rid of it. You cut the ties. But it's your mum and dad. You you would support them as much as you possibly can. But um, is Sandy's support really right? Is, she, is it warranted? Should Dottie cut the ties with her after, you know, what could What is she coming back happen? now? Especially she, after she passed out s- after a drug overdose. She did. I mean, is she going to be back now, though? Or is she, was that, she going to run up? Because I don't think I don't think she's been brought in as a as a regular character, has she? I think she's going to be one of these characters that kind of comes and goes. So this might that might this thing where she's taken Dottie's money out of her handbag and then just made a run for it might be it for a little while. Yeah. Right, right. So you don't think? So? I, I see. I thought this was going to be a continuation throughout the week. I genuinely did. I, I didn't realize no, that it was I, just a kind I, of like a an ex, an extra character. No, I don't know. I mean, I it would make. I well, see the thing is, I always ba- I always base this sort of thing on where they appear on the cast list in the credits, and she was always like on the bottom in sort of like the guest character section. You know, Alfie, um, uh, the the guy Alfie, the guy who plays Liam, um, is like up there with the rest of the cast now. Whereas Martha Cope, I think her name is, has been that's uh, back on the bottom all week. So you know, I don't know. Um, but I like that's her a lot. That's interesting because I'm Liam really... has already been told that he's a short-term character as well. He's only going to be in it for three months, mm. which does feel like yeah, a bit of a testing ground. Back. But that, that's interesting that they... yeah, that's, that's all it is. Yeah. I think. <laughs> okay, he'll fair be back. enough. Yeah, fair enough. He'll be, he'll yeah. be back. He'll be back. Yeah. But you like um, Sandy. You I have to say, Sandy. I really like Sandy. Really like Sandy. Really like Sandy a lot. Um, she might be Shirley in a lot of ways, though. To be fair, you know that real kind of rough, hard exterior, and probably quite a bit softer on the inside. Um, and just like a, a face, like a pickled walnut all the way through. Not like, not like you know, <laughs> to say that shot, but I mean miserable all 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 sort of uh, all sort of week. Um, yeah, I liked her. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where her and uh, Dottie's relationship go. I'd like, to, I'd quite like that to be a thing that they kind of keep coming in and out of. It'd be so interesting, actually, when you think about how the relationship between Nick and Dot always was. Imagine doing that in reverse with Dotty, where the That's mother exactly, is the person that comes in. And, exactly. Yeah, that would be interesting, happen. wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be interesting. So yeah. this is the first kind of era of Sandy we've had. She will be back so it may, in another time and, and keep... Um, kind of swindling Dottie out of money, especially once they get this inheritance thing sorted. So maybe that's where it's going. That'd be quite exciting, wouldn't it? It would. I, I, I'm glad we're on the same page here, Rob, because I was going to ask you whether this, this is perhaps a, a story where they could be heading down because it, it's, yeah, that would be really great, actually, if they kind of recreated the Dot and Nick uh, story where, as you say, she returns and comes back whenever she finds out there's money lingering about. Because she, I think Sandy must know something. Sandy must know some kind of intel for why she's returned at this moment. She must know that that Dottie is due money at some point. You know, it would it would it would have been yeah. by Tom maybe talking to the family by accident and leaking it by accident. I mean, is Tom as innocent as he's making himself out to be? He's, he seems panicked. That he's like Sandy has returned, but then Tom has lied before and tricked us and kind of mm. had this twist uh, a couple of weeks ago where we found out he's not actually yeah. you know, Terry, um, T- Terry Khan. So is Tom actually playing yeah, well, another that's... blinder and deliberately strung Dotty along to then have Sandy be introduced? Maybe. I mean, I thought that Tom seemed a little bit more keen on the plan this week than he has done previously. Because when he saw um, Sandy, he was you instantly too. like, oh, God, this is all going to fall apart instantly now. So his main priority this week was sort of getting rid of Sandy. Now, I wonder if maybe we haven't quite seen the last of Sandy in this little stint and there might be a scene between her and Tom. I swear to God, if it may, they'll do something stupid like make Tom kill her or something, they better not. Um, but it will be... I, I Maybe she's not quite done yet. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Cause we've, but Tom just seemed pretty convinced that one glance at him will bring the whole thing apart because if he's Nick's brother yeah then she but then i wonder if this i wonder if she would recognize him though because 
if I remember, if, if I rem- Sandy wouldn't have been around all that much during Dottie's life. If this is the sort of history that the two characters have got together. You know, with drugs, and then with Nick as a father as well. So I would imagine Dottie's upbringing would have been incredibly sort of rocky. So I don't know whether, mm. and, and to be fair, she, rocky. The inclination is that she'd have been off. Yeah, like, ah, there you go. Um, and also the inclination is that she would have been off around on drugs for most of it. So would she even remember a, a face? You know, who knows? But Tom is convinced that one glance at him will bring the whole thing apart. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Mm. It's be, funny how but then even, but Tom then is so concerned people, about would... Sandy spotting him. Yeah. Tom doesn't seem that concerned yeah. about Sonia's, like we talked last week about Sonia's social media or any other fa- wow. any of the extended family, like the Brandings, <laughs> working it out. Tom, it, it, the, the, well, the yeah, clear but... present danger now is that Sandy might recognise him. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I don't think that she would have known... <laughs> I don't think it would have, they would have made too much contact in the past because also though Tom is Nick's brother it was with another it wasn't with Dot it was with a third perhaps uh, wife with another mother um, and so yeah. with another mother so maybe maybe she maybe she wouldn't even have any kind of knowledge of him like even no. seeing him like, and also day, if she said anything like, is anyone going to believe her yeah so yeah. who knows who knows? We'll see where it goes. Um, but no, I, I, I like I like this whole story, and I really like Sandy. I mean, obviously, I, I say I like Sandy. She's not a likable person, but I liked the role that she's playing, and it gives Dottie another little layer as well because it means that Dottie is uh, it's, has come from quite a broken home, which is interesting for her character. So I'd be interested to see kind of yeah. how that builds from how that builds in the future, and it gives and it gives Dottie some more to do, which I. And as opposed to just make her a villain in this story, which I thought was where they were going to go with it, but they've given Dotty that little bit of a layer to her, which is nice. So we'll, well, we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah, I agree. And it's nice to see Millie Zero kind of doing lots, you know, being able to perform. And again, we'll talk about it at the end of the show, but because uh, Maisie is leaving the show, it's nice that a young female character because all the young female characters seem to be disappearing uh anyway yeah. one like final story then uh which is um suki suki again it seems to be like no no definitely not i mean she seems to be building bridges in one moment and then not build and then just kind of destroying them in the next um she is quite a roller coaster wasn't it because she kind mm. of asked for forgiveness from honey but then tricked Honey because she, she wanted Honey to then admit to credit that she had lied um, and that Suki hadn't kissed her. And then when she did that, Suki then exposed her and said, like, well, now people think you're a liar. No one's going to believe anything you say, so I'm going to fire you from the minute mark and then you can't take this any further. And it just, for me, it just felt a bit sad because I thought, like, especially at the end of the week when Suki kind of then went over to Honey and kind of realised that, you know, I... I've been quite a bitch, actually, and I do deserve everything I've done. Didn't offer a job back. Can you still forgive me? No. You're still fired, but can you? You're still fired, but can we still be mates? <laughs> no, Suki. That's not quite how that's going to work, love. Um, <laughs> it was a bit odd. It, it did feel kind of. I was sort of regretful that. that I mean, that's for their friendship. I think Honey made that very clear as well. That this, that friendship done. Like, I would never believe anything you say again. You've screwed that up for yourself. Goodbye. Um, which. Fair play, actually, Honey. And I really like, actually, that they didn't make Honey a victim throughout all of this. You know, clearly Honey's stuff yeah. with, you know, the likes of Adam has taught her enough to recognise a bully when she sees one and she stood up for herself and, and dealt with it admirably, I thought. Um, and I was kind of hmm. against the whole Suki thing very, very until the end of the week where, again, this story with Suki kind of having feelings for Honey, I've been sort of on the fence about um, until they had that moment where she was really horrible to her then turned around and then was instantly heartbroken about her own behaviour that automatically kind of made it a little bit more interesting for me because it kept that layer stuff going you know so I still I mean yeah. I still don't I yeah. still don't think we've yeah. had that much as in what's going on inside her head as to whether she is because she slapped Honey yeah. this week when Honey's mentioned that she might be gay but I don't think Suki is gay because of this she had the whole thing with Peter and I'd be really annoyed if we never hear anything from that again. Um, one thing I would say, though, is, I mean, as much as you always love to have Kira on screen, I know, and I'd hate to remove screen time from Kira for you, but I would have thought, actually, that Ash really? would have been a more interesting kid to have that role in this week as opposed to Kira because Suki and Ash have that have that thing of when Ash came out as bisexual, she gave Suki a hard time. So it would have been more interesting, I think, if Ash had been the kid that 
uh, had found out about it, and Suki was kind of frantically denying it from her for her rather than Kira. But then I suppose yeah. you could argue that she always she wants Kira to see her in nothing but high respect because he's the next sort of one down the line in the hierarchy of the family. So I don't know. What do you think? I see where you're coming from, actually, from there. Um, I, I think you're right by, by what you say that it kind of made it interesting because obviously she wants the respect of Colette and she wants Colette to respect her back because they're meant to be the two kind of top, top of the top of the you know the food chain in the, within the Panasar family. I think also that if Ash was the one to find out, that it would then become almost a bit of a coming out story. And if if and I agree with you, I don't I don't think Suki is gay. I don't think I I think that she. She might be liquid. She might, you know, be very open to sexuality. Um, Fluid. But I don't think she's specifically <laughs> gay. So did I say liquid? I said liquid. <laughs> Fluid. <laughs> Fluid. Suki, oh. might be, Suki might be squash. And we might be there. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, but if Ash was to find that out, I think that Ash would be very convinced that she should then take her down the path of then trying to open up to her sexuality and be more open about it. While with with Colette, it's it's a secret still. So it's, come on, Mum, I'll take you to Soho. You'll have a great um, night. So yeah. so yeah, yeah. So I, I don't think I don't. I, for me, I don't think Ash was the right person to hear it. Um, I think Colette. I think okay. they made the right judge judgment call there. For, for me, talking about did. what you said about um, uh, Suki Suki. Yeah, and also I love Colette. Um, mm. Of course, uh, Jazz Doll. Phone me. Um, and. Uh, Talking James about Farrah, like when Suki Thanks. is kind of like is always kind of like showing her emotions behind the, the back of Honey. It's like every scene, like you saw, yeah. like they had the conversation, and then every t- uh, Suki would be a bit like, like, oh, you know, like that, kind of like really I'm upset idiot, afterwards, yeah. and like her face would show that emotion. Yeah, um, I I really liked that in a weird way because it if it it's like every it, but it was every scene, so you'd think it would kind of been overused a little bit. Every time there was a Honey and Suki interaction, you saw Honey come off as this very strong. Apart from that one time when Honey broke down in tears, but you saw Honey kind of come off as this very strong character and walked away. And then the parting shot mm. was always then of Suki kind of like making an emotional face of like being upset or remorseful or mm. concerned. And like I I, I mean. Maybe there's an argument that it was a bit overused, but I kind of liked it. It was a bit I don't think so. I thought it worked. Kind of, it, it, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It kind of. It kind of brought. It kind of brought it on. Because for I mean, me, that was the few, what, that was uh, what kept sh- it interesting sh- this week. That was the, all I was to say is that yeah. for me is what kept it interesting because it kept that layer of Suki there. Because it's kind of just like you're not just yeah. being a bitch. You're being a bitch for but for what you believe is a reason. There's a re- you you yeah. you think you are justified in your behaviour, but you are upset by that justification, and that kind of kept Suki interesting for me this week. I am still completely on the fence as to how I feel about the whole sexuality thing with Suki. I don't know whether she is the right character to have done this with. I don't know yet. That's that's my that's the honest truth. Um, mm. But we'll but we'll see. You know, this presumably the there's much more to come with on this. social media. Because a lot of people on social media have actually echoed your uh, opinion, which is that it's great that they're doing this workplace bullying storyline because that's that's quite rare actually. It's quite an interesting storyline to to investigate, but it's a shame that they've actually had to then involve someone's sexuality in it. It feels it feels it feels like that's kind of well, just being shoehorned in, and it feels a little bit wrong to have done it. Yeah, because I didn't even consider it until Jay was turning around to Honey and saying things like. You know, you've never heard of the Me Too movement and, you know, doing and talking about like how technically, if you know, if Suki had been a bloke, this would have been a very different storyline altogether. I That got over my head completely. I didn't even think about that aspect of it. And he was absolutely yeah. right. You know, and in some ways, this is some sort of sexual harassment claim, you know, so it, it, it's got it's brought all that into it again. But like you say, the, the sexuality side of it has completely and utterly sort of overtaken that. And that's more of the focus than anything kind of almost the murkier side of it. Um, again, I don't know whether yeah. Suki was the right character to do a sort of sexuality issue with. I don't know. I'm not saying she isn't. There, there's still presumably much more of the storyline to come. When Honey returns, you know, maybe they'll start to see some more. Jay's still sticking around, so maybe there'll be some... Because I think there's a bit of a thing with Kirat and Jay now, because Kirat was livid at the accusation. Um, and kind of had Jay pinned up against a yeah. wall and all that sort of thing, which mm, lucky Jay, eh? Um, but it'll be <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if Jay has any reaction to the Panasars whilst Honey's away. I hope he does because Jay material is well. Let's be honest, needed. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. 
It would be interesting also if Jay and Kurit have this kind of conflict because obviously Kurit and Ben are working together as well with the archers. So then there's and Jay oh, and Ben true, are best yeah. friends. They're almost brothers. So that's an interesting oh, yeah. dynamic that they kind of opened up between them. So that'd be interesting to open up. Um, one one last thing in this story as well, which I did you feel really bad for Billy because Billy was so excited about going to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, I don't Florida. see why he couldn't go. He got some bunny rabbit ears, thinking that was Mickey Mouse. And then as soon as like uh, Honey was able to get the week off, she was like, "Oh no, I'm going now." So you don't need to bother anymore. I thought that was yeah, really cruel. I, just, I felt so bad I for thought, Billy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, Billy couldn't have gone to. He could have slept in separate hotel rooms, but then I think well, what the was that they don't. They only ticket. paid for one ticket. Tough. Uh, yeah, I thought they. Were, I thought yeah. it was a bit mean. Mind you, Billy would never have been able to afford a ticket, would he? And if Honey's just been fired, she wouldn't have been able to afford one either. But yeah, I thought Honey was a bit mean to Billy this week. No. In all honesty, they could have. I they did. could have worked out something to make them both gone. And Will could have stayed with Jay. That would have been all right. You know, Jay's perfectly trusted with the Mitchell kids, so it would have been all right. Oh well. Um, but yeah, Honey's now gone for a few weeks. I. I but then Billy, Billy and Jay now, they're staying together now because Jay invited Billy to stay in the house. Yes. So where do you think this is going to go now then? Because now you've got Billy, Jay and Will, I would assume, living in the house. Now, are they going to make up now or are they just going to be at loggerheads for the whole two, for however long Honey's away for? What do you think? I think it'll be a week long kind of jokey, funny storyline where Comedy you end story up line. having yeah, Billy yeah. and Jay kind of... Yeah, and they end up they end up making amends, and they just realise that perhaps Billy was being a bit harsh, and Jay, you know, needs to have a bit more understanding about Billy's feelings, and then everything will be nice wrapped up in a nice little bow for when Honey returns. Mm. Although, imagine because we haven't had one in a really long time. Imagine if on Tuesday's episode we have a two hander between Jay and Billy <laughs> in the flat. I love that. I would Can love you that. imagine you won't that? Get it, but I would love that. <laughs> I'd love that. I know. Yeah, I would love a two-hander back. Imagine, right, isn't it mad, though, that EastEnders were kind of famous for their two-handers, and they're the soap that does the two-handers. And then, you know, yeah. lockdown happened, where you had to kind of keep actors apart, and it would have been the perfect time for a few two-handers, and they never did one yeah. once throughout all the yeah. whole sort of pandemic thing. It's a shame. That would have been a great opportunity. Shame. Wasted opportunity, because I love mm, a two-hander. I agree. Maybe, has, they don't think that, it, maybe they don't think we've got the attention any... span of them anymore. <laughs> Not in the Kate Oates era, no. no. That's the last true. one we had was the last two. Ha- the last two-hander we had was uh, Stuart and Linda. That was the last two, like official two-hander that we right. had. Right. That was ages the ago. Now. Years back. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's oh, the one. So ago. years back now. Yeah. When years back. Shame. When Mick was stealing baked bean back. tins to use for uh, weapons. <laughs> Yeah, bring That's back. I'd love those a two-hander. Days. Jay and Billy two-hander. Love you know what? I would welcome that 100% as well. You know, I'm not the biggest there's fan of Billy. History. But actually, in this instance, because I think it would hash out and quite be quite nice between... Yeah, there's more yeah. than enough history between them. Because Jay could bring up her to his dad and Jace and all kinds of stuff. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. I'd really enjoy it. Let us know, viewers and listeners, who would you like to see a two-hander from in the future? Would you, is there any two characters that you would love to see have that moment of intimacy and have a whole 25 minutes dedicated to their characters? Let us know uh, in the comments section below. Or you can give, we will give you all the contact details at the end of the show. Yes, but now we're going to have a little chat about some big news that was dropped almost out of nowhere <laughs> on Friday, just before they aired EastEnders on the BBC. Uh, oh yeah, just out of random nowhere uh, on I Ain't Want to Gossip. And you know me, I ain't want to gossip. So this week, um, instead of reading out your comments, we're actually going to have a bit of a chat about uh, that news that dropped, as I mentioned just now, uh, which is that Maisie Smith is leaving the soap after, I believe, 17 years. Uh, she'd been on it from, she must have been like six, seven years old, and she's been on it constantly throughout up until uh, she filmed her last scenes to d- or yesterday as we filmed this uh, which was on Friday the 8th of October and um, yeah and like I say it was dropped really quietly like there was no kind of press about it I think everyone once it was dropped on the BBC official Twitter page uh, a lot of the news outlets were then scrambling quickly trying to find like quotes and information about it. And um, what's interesting is it was a video that was that was posted of them kind of like giving Maisie her gift. And, that you know, that uh, Albert Square signed uh, uh, sign sign that they give everyone who leads the show. Yeah. And um, I don't know, it just felt a bit like, oh, 
okay, she's leaving. And like, there's not even a big, I can't even think of it that they're going to be able to attach a big story to it, particularly because they're running out of time, especially if they filmed the, like the scenes this week, like six weeks time. Then I guess it's going to be, uh, the, you know, good. I mean, it's Christmas. Is it Christmas? Will it be now? Are they filming it's Christmas still? It's close to Christmas. It's just before Christmas. I would say, I would, no, no, I think they're kind of finishing off Christmas now. But so I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be just before Christmas. I don't think, I don't think this is going to be the big Christmas story. Personally, no. I think it might be the, the, like a the kind of like her goodbye will be just just before the Christmas kind of week ramp up. But it's just the it's just the kind of quietness of it and the kind of like the lack of fanfare for such a long character and someone someone who's like dedicated quite a lot to the show and with a lot of talent too. It just felt a bit I should be back. flat. For me, oh, we don't know. Well, we don't know what happens yet. Think- I mean, what did you, what did you, what did you want? Like a massive sort of media sort of announcement that show because remember there was talk earlier on in the year that, about this, and because it had been so long since that announcement, we kind of just thought, oh, I guess that was a lie. Then I guess that's not happening. And now they dropped the, the thing out of no, out, out like you say, out of nowhere um, last night. Um, I think it's, it's a shame. I because I've been watching a lot of EastEnders two thousand and eight recently. You completely forget how brilliant Tiffany was when was a kid. Like Maisie Smith came oh. in and just stole the show from the second she arrived. Mini little, little mini Tiffany was an absolute, you know, she was brilliant. The little rivalry she had with Zayna before was sitting on her wall um, and just being such a cheeky little kid, but not an unlikable cheeky kid. She was a funny, um, cheeky little product of Bianca. And, it, and oh, she was brilliant. And she's grown up and she's a really strong actress. Um, you know, she's had some really good storylines over the years. Um, I don't think she's going to be gone forever. I think she will be back. Because um, I think they, they'd be... I mean, they've, they haven't killed her off, and they made that quite clear in the um, in in the video that they did. Because Maisie said, oh, "I'm sure I'll be back one day." So even Maisie's kind of thinking, like, "Right, well, let's see how this works, and then I'll uh, I'll come back if I need to." But um, yeah, hopefully <laughs> she'll be back because I'm I'm going to miss Tiff. I think it would have been a shame. I think it's a shame that they didn't think to do sort of Bernie and Tiff leaving together because those two characters have had quite a bit of history. Um, but again, you know, it's a sort of friendship that's sort of kind of been forgotten about in recent weeks. So. Um, hopefully, if Tiff comes back and Bernie eventually will, will be returning to, they can build, they can start building on that friendship again. Um, so, how do you think she's going to go then? Where do you, where do you think the storyline? How do? Because at the minute, there's no real sign that Tiffany has any plans on leaving. So, how do you think we're going to get to a Tiffany hmm. exit? Well, I wonder if it is going to be linked to, as we were saying earlier on the show, that the uh, Liam's character is only going to be on the show for a couple of three months. So it feels like that's the link. It's going to be Liam and Tiff leave together, perhaps to go see Ricky and Bianca and, you know, become like a family again. You know, just something really bad will happen. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it must be linked to the Keegan, I guess. Somehow Keegan has mm. upset, like said something, a home truth to her, and she's just refusing to believe it. Something along those lines. I can't help but think it's not going to be anything massive. Nothing, no huge ending and i don't think it's going to be a black cab one either i think it's going to be st- stroll up the stairs of the uh underground station and catch a train to the to, you know to the nearest eurostar you know something along those lines i just i be. i worry it's going to be a really kind of wet ending of nothing kind of like it'd be sad of course it's going to be sad um and and, and i you know i think there's going to be a lot of emotion attached to it uh there's have been a few calls for this the, you know if he doesn't get a julius theme then we're gonna riot but i wouldn't get my hopes up on that either to be perfectly honest with you i don't think like you say i think she is due to return i don't think it's going to be anytime soon i don't know if it would be with Maisie's playing the role again Oh, of course it could it be a will. recast. If no, they, if, I say that. I think <laughs> I so. Say that I, now, you know. Because <laughs> I wonder if Maisie. I don't. I just think Maisie has so much potential ahead of her, and it would not surprise me if she then went off and we saw her on a Netflix series in six months' time, or you know, doing something in a film somewhere. I really wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and I just think that if they did, then want to bring Tiff back, especially if they're planning to bring Liam back again maybe in a year's time because he's been successful as a character on the show if you then see a different tiff coming along um i don't know but i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't expect a julius theme being attached to her her exit i really wouldn't because it's just the julius theme is a quite a finite 
ending for, for a character. It, it normally means that you've basically seen the last of them. And if you do see them, it's not for a very, very long time. And I don't think that's something that there's, there's any plan for with Tiff, personally. Um, but for, for story-wise, I genuinely... I genuinely can't think what it could be. It has to be to do with Liam and Keegan. I think she's going to go. Off, I think she's going to go off with Liam. Do you have any I think. theories? I think, that's, I, I think she's going to go off with Liam and sort of try and fix whatever issue has gone wrong with him. Um, imagine if like Ricky just turned up r- randomly and like she had to go off with Ricky. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? If Ricky just came out for two weeks or something, just to sort of tie Tiffany's story up, <laughs> have a few little bits with Janine, and then just and then just go off. Because that's the other thing. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that this means that Tiffany. That Janine's only relative on the square at the minute has disappeared now, because Whitney isn't. Yeah, related yeah another to kind of. Is that Janine's only kind of family? Um, mm. I don't know. Well, it's, you know, that's not, I, I doubt it was deliberate. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mrs. Macy's saying I wanted to leave rather than her being axed. Um, oh, I agree. But why then bring back Janine if there's going to be no kind of family ties for her? Because obviously the whole show is kind of built on kind of this family dynamic, and I just feel like. Yeah, but I'd argue that Janine's character is strong enough to not have that. But yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know who who knows. I I think her exit is going to be around Liam somehow. I think she's going to have to go off and deal with whatever trouble Liam has got himself into, uh, and then that'll mm. be her exit, and then she'll go off with that. I think I honestly I think give it a couple of years, and she might be back. It's either going to be she's going to be back in like a couple of years or never again I think that it's going to be one of those two extremes because like you say Maisie Sif is very talented she's a great actress clearly a great dancer you know she's a triple threat I think um, so Ooh, yeah. I wish we, are, we at Wolford Weekly obviously wish her all the best of luck for the future we will miss you Maisie uh, and let's hope and we will uh, enjoy Tiff while we've got her Come on then, Chief. Give us the details of how we can get how people can get in touch to us and give them give us uh, their views of Maisie. Contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Walford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Walford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos. And you can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify, or any of your favourite podcast sites. Uh, you can email us at robwalfordweekly at gmail.com or at alexwalfordweekly at gmail.com. Um, we will be back the same time next week. Who knows what we will be discussing next week? Who knows that the, the square changes weekly and that's why we love it. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from myself. Farewell. Bye.